Hey, do you want a tank? Well, I don't. But here are some tips for anyone who wants to play tank. Or maybe not. Because sometimes you just can't help but be last pick. These tips are things that I have observed from all of the games I played with tank players, tank enemies, different playstyles of tank users I've seen in my games, and stuff I got from asking people. So maybe you already know all of this, maybe you don't, but whatever, right? Let's begin. Pick the right tank. Everyone has a different preference. I know you like some other tanks better than others. But if your tank can't freaking stun enemies or stop them from killing your teammates or from running away, then screw your tank and pick a different one. Stick close to your mid laner whether they're marksman or mage, help clear minion waves or harass and push back enemy heroes from clearing your wave. Take damage for your teammates when helping them with killing jungle monsters. Help them out in damaging the monsters as well but give them the last hit or the killing blow, especially when it comes to the buff. It gives them more gold and it speeds up their item build. This also applies in minion waves. Avoid last hitting if you can, but help them in dealing damage to make the process faster. When killing the crab or turtle, check the bushes around for there might be enemies waiting for that last hit steal. Go wherever your mid laner wants to go. If they want to gank and try to kill an enemy hero in the side lanes, provide the stun or disable so they don't miss their skills and enemies won't get away from their damage. Never ever solo clear minion waves unless you really need to split push or something. You're a tank and tanks deal very low damage so it will take you ages and a lot of wasted time if you force yourself to punch minions in the face one by one. Do not freaking chase enemy heroes that are running away if you don't have allies that are damage dealers with you. Forget about it. You're not getting that kill and you're just wasting time. And your carries that you left behind are probably dead now because you left them alone to be assassin food. When pushing towers, avoid helping in taking down towers. I know it sounds crazy, but let your teammates do it. Let the marksmen, assassins, fighters, or whoever. Instead, move around and look for enemies who are trying to defend the tower or might attack your team from the sides or from behind. Always go in and check bushes even before your teammates get to that area. Always be in front of the formation during team fights, but keep an eye on the map around your team in case of enemies that might go from behind. Only dive in or engage to start a team fight if you are absolutely sure that there won't be enemy assassins who will jump onto your ally marksmen or mages faces once you leave. So make sure you always check your map before you do anything. Check where your teammates are, where the enemies are. Check the bush around your team for any hidden enemies. Never stray too far from your teammates. Provide an extended vision for your allies. Heroes only have a limited area where they can see enemy heroes in the map. So go ahead and extend that by staying in a bush nearby while they're doing their stuff. Maybe jungling, maybe pushing a tower. Act like a ward. Wards don't exist in that game, but heroes can be one. Especially supportive heroes like tank. Put yourself in a bush where you think enemies might go through. And then stop them from ending your ally marksmen or mages careers. Build your items accordingly. Manually buy items from the shop to counter the damage coming from the enemy team. If you notice that the enemy marksman is getting fed, buy armor items. If it's magic damage that you're having problems with, buy magic resist items. Adjust your build in every game depending on the situation. If enemies are chasing you and your carry hero ally, do your best in stopping the enemy heroes even if it means dying. It would be better for you to die than let's say a marksman or an assassin or a mage or anyone else in your team actually. Because the more time your allies spend dead, the less time they'll have to get gold, XP, items, and the less damage your team will have late game. Observe if your teammates have enough damage to kill an enemy hero. Do not think that whenever you jump in and disable an enemy or stun them, your ally is 100% gonna get that kill. It doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes they won't deal enough damage and you'll just die without your team getting a kill. And that leads to feeding. So think about it. Maybe they're behind in items or their ultimate is on cooldown or they're low on health or mana. Just be very aware of these things or what your teammates can do. One way to gauge 
how much damage your ally can deal is observe how they kill minions are they killing the jungle monsters or the minion waves fast or do they play aggressively do like do they attack and harass enemies if so then go ahead and hold down enemies with a stun and help them with that kill if an enemy split pusher is trying to steal towers on the other side of the map it is never your job to solo defend that lane if you can Ping your team or do a signal so an ally assassin or a mage can deal with that split pusher and be prepared to either help them get that guy or stay with the rest of the teammates for a team fight instead. You are a lot more useful in team fights so make sure you stay where the team fight's about to happen. It is okay to run away if you're taking too much damage and you are about to die. If you can avoid giving the enemy a kill, do it. And if you can't and someone in your team really has to die, if you have to choose between you and your marksman, make the right choice. Do not worry too much about getting to the enemy backline to disable their squishies. That is an assassin's job. It is more important that you don't leave your damage dealers alone so you can disable anyone trying to get close to them or enemies that they are attacking. When doing turtle or lord with your team, do not spend your skills on the lord. Reserve your skills to stun or disable enemies who might go in for your marksman or might try to steal the Lord. If no one else is doing it, check bushes around the area for enemies that might be waiting. The more you use a specific tank hero, the better you get at estimating how much damage you can take. So make sure you play a lot of games with one tank and get a feel of how long you can stay and take enemy hits. Understanding or even mastering this will lessen the time you get killed in every game. If you have to choose between protecting your mage, assassin, or marksman, protect the one who deals more damage. Usually early game is gonna be the mage, so stick with your mage. And the late game, when the marksman has items, switch over to the marksman and make sure he can freely hit enemy heroes without getting killed. So for now, that is it. Playing as a tank is one of the most complicated roles in MOBAs like Mobile Legends. That's why I don't do it often. I hate it. But it's a really important role and the best teams win easily if the tank is awesome. So to all the tank users out there, you are the true MVP and you have my respect. Thank you so much for picking tanks. And for people who are trying to get into tanks, I hope these tips somehow help you in a way. If you want more of these tips, check the link in the description for the post I made in Facebook where people put their tips for aspiring tank users. Tips that they would give for someone who want to be a better tank. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like and subscribe and again, my name is Shitman Tagazo and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.